I'm gonna show you guys how to play the guitar solo in Just What I Needed by The Cars. This is one of my favorite solos because it's super melodic and it's a great intro to playing over different chord changes. It takes you outside of just straight minor pentatonic scale. Let's just talk briefly about what's going on underneath the solo so you can get an understanding of where those lines come from. So the song's in the key of E major and behind the solo, uh, we have these chords going on. So it's a bunch of power chords, but those power chords are implying larger chord voicings. So the first power chord up here, it's like E major, then we're going B major, and this is sort of like C sharp minor, and this one's going to be G sharp major, then we have E again, B, C sharp minor, and A major. All right, so let's look at the solo, and while we're doing this, I will mention which chord that given phrase is being played over. And we'll talk a little bit about why it works over that, and how you can use this in your own solos, or improvising, or just riff writing in general. So the first phrase goes like this. So we have three bends here on the seventh fret on the B string. That's the pickup, so that's like right before we land on E. The fourth one, that's as we're landing on the E chord. And that little lick there, that's over E major, which makes sense. In the E major scale, that's three, two, one. So yeah, you're bending up from the seventh fret, bending up a whole step and then releasing. And then landing on the fifth fret on the B string. Then this next part, that's over the B chord. So in B, that's the third of B, the two of B, and the one of B. So it's the same exact intervals as what we played over the E chord. This was three, two, one here, and E, and this is three, two, one in B. We're gonna bend up to the third. So we're gonna bend up from the sixth fret on the G string, up a whole step. And then you're gonna pick again the sixth fret on the G string, and pull off to the fourth fret on the G string, which is your B. Then that part, we're bending up again. That bend happens over the C-sharp minor. And what that note is, that's a nine, or a two in C-sharp minor, which is a common tension in minor chords. That note right there. Bend up, whole step, release that bend. Then pick the fifth fret on the G string and hammer on and pull off the sixth fret. And that part is over our G-sharp major which makes perfect sense there because that's your third of G sharp. Which suddenly brings us outside the key of E major for a second to satisfy that chord. So, so far what we got is this. All right, next part. This part over the E chord. We're gonna slide up from the fourth fret to the sixth fret on the D string. And then go fourth fret on the G string twice. And then slide up fourth fret to sixth fret on the G string. And land on the fifth fret on the B string. So. Then you're gonna slide up sixth fret to eighth fret. Same little shape here. So it's gonna be sixth fret to eighth fret, and then seventh fret on the B string. And then you're gonna hit that note twice and slide it back down the second time to the fifth fret on the B string. So this is all over the E here. That's on the downbeat of the E. And then this is over the B. Let's see if I can play both. So here, you can think of that part as just E major pentatonic. And then when we get to the B chord, that's sort of shaping a B chord. If you look at those notes, of your B bar chord here, the third and the fifth of that chord. And then this part goes over the C sharp minor to the A major. So that first bend is over the C sharp minor, and we're actually bending up from the seventh fret a whole step. That note is going from B to C sharp as we bend it up. So it's landing on a C sharp over a C sharp minor. Makes sense. The second time we bend up there to the C sharp, it's over the A major. And then that note, still being a C sharp, is actually the third of A major. So just a part of the chord. That note right there, if you'd like to picture it in the chord. So that part, bending up, 
release, pick the fifth fret on the E string, then bend back up, seventh fret. A whole step bend. So that part goes. Then you're gonna release that bend by picking at the top, releasing the bend, and then picking again on the fifth fret on the E string. And again, that's still over the A chord. So that's going three, two, one, and A. Then the next phrase here is gonna look like this. So we're bending up again on the seventh fret on the high E string. So I'm gonna pick it and bend it quickly up a whole step. Then bring down that bend and pluck it twice. And on the second one, you're gonna bend it back up again. But that second bend, instead of being like, it's almost like you're playing two notes without picking two notes. So you're going to have that sort of sound. So that first little piece right there, that's over the E. That's over the B. But these two phrases, you can just think E major pentatonic if you want. So this is a very similar thing just on the B string. You're gonna bend up on the seventh fret and pull off onto the fifth fret. Then after that, over the C sharp minor, we're sort of using this phrase to lead into the G sharp major. So it's gonna give you this note here, which doesn't make much sense over C sharp minor, but as we're leading into the G sharp major, it makes a lot of sense because it's the third of G sharp major again. So we're gonna bend sixth fret, whole step on the G string. Bring it back down and then play the fifth fret. And then you're gonna take that note and we're just playing it up an octave. And the way we're doing that is bending the sixth fret on the high E string, a whole step. And then you're gonna come down and pull off onto the fourth fret. So, so again, that's three, two, one, just now in G sharp major. Three, two, one. Now this part's a little tricky. You're gonna bend with your middle finger. You can support it with your index finger on the seventh fret on the B string. Also, this is over the E chord, by the way. So bending from the seventh fret a whole step with your middle finger. And the reason you want your middle finger is so you can get your pinky up here on the ninth fret on the high E string. And what you're gonna do is hybrid pick this if you can. So I'm picking the note on the B string and then I'm gonna pluck with my middle finger on the high E string. And then as this note is still bent, I'm gonna pick it again. And then on the top, I'm gonna bring that ninth fret down to a seventh fret and use my ring finger for that. So, so it's pick the bend. Then pluck with middle finger on the high E string, ninth fret. Then pick the bend again while still being held. And then middle finger pluck again on the high E string on the seventh fret this time. And then finally you're gonna come down by picking the bend and releasing it. And then picking the fifth fret on the B string. So that little phrase is over the E and the B, okay? And then this very last part goes like this. So you're gonna slide up from the sixth fret on the G string up to the ninth fret. And then play the ninth fret on the high E string as well. So you can think of these two as sort of one shape, one voicing. The distance between these two notes is called a sixth. Sixths are used pretty often for like harmonized guitar parts. So you're gonna slide up. You can use the pick or you could hybrid pick it if you want with the middle finger, either way. And then you're gonna slide up again to the 11th fret and then 11th fret on the high E string. Then here's where the shape changes just a little bit to stay within the E major scale. So the 11th fret is gonna slide up to the 13th fret and on the top you have the 12th fret now. So you're gonna hold those two notes out together. So it's like. Then you're gonna slide middle finger up just a half step to the 14th fret. And now these voicings are just gonna move up in half steps. So now we're back to this shape, 14th fret on the G string and the high E string. And the last part is gonna go, instead of sliding up to the 15th fret, we're just gonna go pick 15th fret and 15th fret on the high E string. And then we're gonna hit them together on the 16th fret. So. And that part is over the C sharp minor. And we start here. 
which actually, if you look at those two notes, they're within that C sharp minor bar chord shape, if you want to visualize it that way. This is still over C sharp minor. When we get there, that's sort of over the A. And then that's all over the A. And then when you land here, that's back in the E. And those two notes, that's the fifth and the third of E major. And a major chord is made up of one, three, and five. So that makes perfect sense there. So that's basically like just playing an E chord there. But how I would think of this riff here is I would just think of each of these notes is moving up in the E major scale. And then this is the one part where you're adding a half step. So these two notes actually aren't in the E major scale, but they're added as like an extra little tension to land on these two notes, which are in the E major scale and represent an E chord. Cool. Okay, so the whole solo goes like this. solo I would take it phrase by phrase sort of like how I chopped it up in the video and then try to play it all together I always recommend trying to understand where these lines come from just so it's not pure muscle memory and you're actually able to apply this to other things whether you want to use it for solos riffs writing whatever all right thank you guys for watching I hope you learned something leave any questions in the comments like and subscribe all right thanks guys